Greetings shooters and reloaders. So today I want to take a little time and talk about dyes. What kind of dyes should you buy? And to answer that question, you first have to determine, well, what kind of a shooter are you, which will determine what kind of a reloader are you, which should determine what kind of dyes you should buy. So if you're a person who is um, engaged in or wanting to be engaged in long range uh, rifle shooting, and you want to shoot out to say 600 yards or beyond with, and you're trying to achieve MOA, um, you're gonna want a different type of die than um, somebody who's just your casual shooter. You're gonna want um, dies made by perhaps Redding or, or um, what's the other one? Forrester, I think is another one. Um, they make some very sophisticated dies, uh, namely their bullet seating dies are, might have micrometer adjustments on so that you can really very accurately set the depth of your bullet. And those dies, of course, come at a higher price. So um, if you're not that kind of shooter, then you may not want to invest that kind of money in, in those dies. Um, <clears throat> next down the list um, would, well, so if you're just your average everyday shooter and you're um, interested in, um, let's say you're doing defensive pistol, carbine, free gun, that sort of stuff, and you basically you're re reloading for quantity, then any of the other dies will work for you. RCBS, Hornaday, Lee, any of those dies will work just fine. Um, and one thing uh, you want to make sure is that if you when you buy pistol dies uh, make sure you get carbide dies so this is a set of RCBS dies for nine millimeter and they are carbide dies and the advantage to that is, is you don't have to lube your case so that speeds things up a, a lot which is a big advantage especially if you're gonna load on a turret press or a progressive or something like that um, not having to lube the cases is a big deal I don't think they make rifle dies in carbide uh, that I'm aware of. I wish they did. They would probably be worth the extra money um, because that would save a lot of hassle with lubing them. Um, next uh, on the scale, uh, price-wise, we have uh, Pacific. So now Pacific uh, no longer exists uh, as it did. Um, it was bought out by Hornady. So now when, you, when you're buying uh, Hornady dies, you're basically getting Pacific. But those are good dies. Um, this happens to be a set of uh, 308 Winchester that I've had for many, many years. Um, and they work just fine. Uh, but they're good dies. RCBS, Hornady, um, they're all good. Um, next uh, in line at the cheapest uh, price would be the um, Lee Precision. And um, this one happens to be seven by 57 Mauser. But um, if you're just the everyday shooter, um, you really, you can't go wrong with the Lee dies. You get the most bang for your buck. Um, they're going to uh, work just fine for you. Um, unless, like I say, you're going to get into long-range precision shooting, um, the lead dies will, will serve you just as well as RCBS or Pacific or Hornaday or any of the others. Um, the one thing I like about lead dies is they also come with um, they also come with a shell holder. Can't get it out of there. Come on. Anyway, there. They come with the, with the correct shell holder uh, for that die set, which is it's, it's just handy. You don't have to go searching to find a, the right shell holder. They also come with a powder dipper, which is kind of handy. I, I don't use these too often, but once in a while I do. Um, and if you get their pace setter, um, three die set for rifles, it also comes with the Lee factory crimp die, which I've talked about before. Um, so I think value-wise, these are a great value. I think 
they average somewhere around 28 to 30 dollars roughly your rcbs dies i think the last set that i bought um what did i pay for those i think i paid about probably close to 50 bucks for a set of rcbs dies so it depends on where you get them um but uh, the, the RCBS is generally going to cost you a, a considerably more than the Lee, and so, are, so will the Hornady dies. Now, another thing you can do is, if you're going to gun shows, keep your eyes open for some used dies. You can find some pretty good used dies, um, and uh, if they're in good condition, uh, they'll work just fine if you can get them at a decent price don't pay a high price for them sometimes people at these gun shows think that just because something's old that it's worth more and that's not necessarily the case um now here's an example now these this is a herders die now as you most of you know herders has been out of business a long time and this is a die that was that i inherited from my dad he bought it sometime back in the 60s still has the price tag on it <laughs> three dollars and 69 cents <laughs> I wish that's what they cost today but this is a good die um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with uh, one of these old herders dies if they've been well cared for and and taken care of and they're in good condition um, and that's the beauty of this stuff is it will last you a lifetime um, you buy it once and um, you won't have to buy it again the rest of your life unless you somehow damage it but if you do that's probably your own fault <laughs> now here's a this is interesting this is a herders universal neck sizing die and this too i got from my dad still has a price tag on it four dollars and 95 cents <laughs> um but this is it's kind of an odd looking contraption but and I don't think anybody makes anything like this anymore today, but it's usable for almost all bottleneck rifle cartridges. You just have to adjust it appropriately. Now, unfortunately, recently I broke the um, decapping rod and um, expander ball rod off in here. So I'm trying to get somebody to uh, machine me a new one. If not, then I don't know what I'm going to do because... Um, can't get a new one because herders doesn't exist anymore so that's another thing to think about if you buy old dies don't pay too much for them because if you do break them um, you know you may not be able to replace any parts at least today if you repl if you break something on say an RCBS or a Hornaday or a Lee or a Redding or Forrester or any of those there's they're still being manufactured so parts are available um, What else was I going to say about dies? <clears throat> oh, another thing is um, you might want to have a separate decapping die. So what this does is you put this in the press and all it does is deprime. And there are times where it's advantageous to do that. And there's been times where I'm glad I've had this because um, sooner or later at some point in time, you're going to bust off a uh, decapping pin. Um, it'll most often happen when you accidentally get a Burdan primer uh, case uh, in there by mistake and uh, it'll bust the decapping pin and then you want to keep going uh, but you have to replace that pin well you can put this die in and still do your decapping and then you just have to decap and resize in, a, in separate steps so what are Burdan primers well <clears throat> I don't have an example on hand here, but it's, I run into it a lot with nine millimeter brass if you're picking it up at the range. Um, it's European, uh, so if you've got ammo that's European manufactured, if you look down inside the case mouth and you see two small holes instead of one large hole in the center, then it's, it's Berdan primed and just throw it away. You don't put it in your scrap bucket and turn it in for scrap brass when your bucket gets full. That's what I do. Um, because um, you try to run that through your die and you will bust your decapping pin immediately. Um, so you, and that's the other thing is have extra pins on hand for your decapping die because uh, 
sooner or later you're going to get a Burdan primer in there and you're going to break it. So um, that's another thing to think about is watch for Burdan primers. And uh, I guess that's all I have for now. So until next time, shoot straight, keep your powder dry, and we'll see you on the range.